Determine the value at expiration, the profit, maximum profit, maximum loss, break-even underlying price at expiration, and payoff graph of the strategies of buying and selling calls and puts, and determine the potential outcomes for investors using these strategies. Okay, so as always, let's break down the LOS and see what's expected of us here. This LOS is a list of things we need to be able to understand about options. Now you will recall some of this from a little earlier in the topic, so some of this will be a review and hopefully cement some of these ideas for you. We're going to talk about the options value at expiration, profit, maximum profit, maximum loss, the potential outcomes for investors, the payoff graph, and then to finish, we're going to look at the break-even underlying price at expiration. One point which is made at the beginning of this reading is that we assume options are employed to achieve a particular exposure with a particular timeline. For that reason, we do not need to use an American option because we are specifically intent on action at a certain point in the future and can ignore the facility of early exercise. This assumption takes out any need for you at level one to understand in detail the changing value of an option over its life. We're just looking at an outcome of a strategy on the expiration date of an option. Now, before we tackle the LOS, let's just quickly remind ourselves of some of the notation used in this options material. S is the underlying price, S0 being the price at the start of the period and S capital T being the price at the end of the period. K then denotes the options strike price. Okay, so first let's talk about value at expiration. Now, as you will know by now, a call option is the right to buy an asset in the future, the right to pay a certain predetermined price for an asset. The value of a call option is dependent on the market price of the asset being more than the price we are going to pay, given that we hold the option. So we can say that the payoff of a call option is zero if the underlying price is less than the call price, or the payoff is some positive number if the underlying price is higher than the call price. With a put option, we have the right to sell an asset at a predetermined strike price, so the relationship is backwards. Now, the option has a zero value if the market price is higher than the put price, or some positive value if the option allows us to sell at a strike price higher than the market price. Job one done. Let's talk about profit. Now we know that at the expiration of the option, we're going to either have a position of some value or zero value. It cannot have a negative value. But this is only half of the story. It only describes the option's value at the end. For profit, we need to factor in how much it cost us to get there. Profit is equal to payoff minus premium. So for a call option, we take the expression for payoff and take away the small C sub zero which is the initial cost of a call. And for a put option, we take the put payoff expression and take away a small p sub zero, which denotes the initial cost of a put. Next, we'll look at maximum profit and maximum loss. Let's take a look at the formula for profit with a call option. Remember again that the value of a call is dependent on the underlying price increasing. Now, if we push that increase in the underlying price to the limit, up to infinity, then the underlying price would dwarf the strike price and the overall payoff would dwarf the initial cost. So by pushing the underlying price out to infinity, we find the maximum possible profit on a call option to be infinity. On the other hand, if the underlying price falls, the worst that can happen is a worthless option, meaning that the most we can lose is the option premium. If we then look at the profit equation for a put option, remember that here, value is dependent on the underlying price falling as low as possible, so that our ability to sell at the strike price is more valuable. In this case, we push the underlying price to the limit in the other direction, down to zero, giving us the maximum possible profit on a put option. On the other hand, given an increase in the underlying price, the option will again expire worthless. 
Again here, you simply need to be aware that the maximum loss to the option holder is the premium. Now, just to be really clear, here is a list of the max profit and max loss statements we have just put together for an option holder. One thing to be aware of is that options are a zero sum game. So if we take the perspective of the option writer, we simply look at the negative. On to the next step, the outcomes for investors. This section is all about applying your understanding of options. Given a scenario, what situation is the investor in and what can they do or what should they do about it? For example, think about the option premium itself. As an option writer, you receive in an option premium and expect that the underlying price will move such that you bear no liability at option expiry. The option writer is in a winning position from the beginning. They receive cash early, and if the strike price is never entertained by the underlying, they are never chasing the game. Odds would seem to be in their favor. Of course, in the case of writing call options, the maximum loss is potentially unlimited if the price continually rises. The possibility of a 100% loss is considerably less daunting than the possibility of having to pay out on a 2,000% gain. On the other hand, from the perspective of the option holder, it's important to remember that before we see any profits, we have to recoup the amount of the premium. We have to have a very bullish stance to believe that not only will the price rise, but it will rise significantly in a potentially short space of time to cover the amount of the premium and bring in some profits. It pays to be aware of how much volatility is needed to bring about a favorable move in the underlying. If prices are relatively stable throughout an asset's history and we expect a devastating change in the very near future, we would have to have a very good reason for that. On top of that, it's important to be aware of how the underlying investors are performing. If your option position can only be profitable if the underlying experiences returns of more than 100% on an annualized basis, then you should be aware of the likelihood of that actually happening. Now on to the payoff graphs. Payoff graphs give us all of this information from this section in one neat package. If you can understand and remember these shapes and the payoff graph shapes in the next section, you will have no problem with the options material. This graph shows us the payoff on a call option for a range of possible underlying prices. So how much will the option be worth given the underlying price on the expiration date? Remember again that a call option gives us the right to buy at a predetermined strike price. So we want the price in the market to be higher than the price we are able to buy at with the option. Remember from earlier in the material that this kink in the curve here represents the strike price of the option. In the lower range, the underlying price is less than the strike, so if the underlying price is in this range at option expiry, there is no benefit to holding the call option. We can buy the asset cheaper in the market than we can with the option. While in the upper range, when the underlying price on the expiration date is higher than the strike, the option will have some positive payoff value given by the underlying price at expiration, ST, minus the strike price, K. With a put, value is dependent on being able to sell with the option for more than we can sell in the market. So we want the strike price to be higher than the underlying price. Again, this kink in the curve marks the strike price of the option. This lower area represents where the underlying price is lower than the strike price, meaning that the option has some value. We can sell at the strike price where in the market we would be selling at a lower price. In this upper range, on the other hand, the underlying price in the market is higher than the strike price, meaning that we could sell in the market for a higher price than by exercising the option, so the option has no value. The last thing we need to cover in this section then is the break-even underlying price at expiration. This might be the trickiest thing to understand in this section. Some students definitely have trouble with it, but remember that if you play around with the equation and the graphs of payoff and profit, you should be able to logically work it out. Here's the payoff graph of a call option once more. And here again is the marker for a call's strike price. This is the first thing you must understand. This is not the break-even price of the option. Yes, it is the turning point between worthless and valuable for the option, but that's not the whole story. Because for break-even, we don't want to look at the payoff graph. We want to look at the profit graph, which we get by simply pushing the whole thing down by the amount of the option premium. 
Now we can see that the actual break-even point happens up here at some underlying price above the strike, at the point where the value of the option just about recoups the initial premium cost. If we take the profit equation for the call option and set the profit to zero, reflecting break-even, we can manipulate this expression to figure out that break-even occurs when the underlying price is equal to the strike plus the premium amount. Now if we take the same approach for a put, starting with the payoff graph and adjusting by the amount of the premium to get the profit graph, we can see that the break-even point now occurs at some point below the strike price, somewhere in this region where the option does have some value. And if we apply the same logic as before to the profit equation for a put, setting the profit amount to zero and solving for the underlying price, we find that the underlying price at break-even should equal strike minus the cost of the option. So here's the end result. For a call, the break-even underlying price at expiration is equal to the strike plus the option premium, and for a put, the break-even is at strike minus the put option premium.